Hi, I'm Megan Francis. And I'm Dave Kroc. And this is the Life Work Podcast. In this show, we'll explore what it really takes to build a business while designing a life that matters. Money. Money! <laughs> it is something that a surprising number of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurially minded people don't really want to think much about. Hmm. Because, except for making it, right? Mm-hmm. But we don't want to think about having to manage it or mm-hmm. how to look at it in a bigger way. Um, I'm Megan Francis here with Dave Kroc. This is episode 1.2 of Life Work. And today, Dave is going to be talking a little bit about a book that had a big effect on him as an early entrepreneur, and that is Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, which a lot of people are very familiar with. Um, but kind of also this idea that financial literacy can kind of make or break mm-hmm. your attempts to build this work and life that work together. It was kind of a clumsy way of saying you need to learn how to manage money <laughs> and think about it in a different way. Yeah. But if you think about it, money is in, in many ways the lifeblood of things we want to do in life. So whether it's mm-hmm. a business or it's our personal life, I mean, most of us say we don't really care about money. Oh, I'm more interested in other stuff mm-hmm. and I'm not really interested in money, yet we work we slave away for eight to 16 right. hours a day, depending on who you are, for just that. Yeah. Right? So, but most of us don't really understand how it works, or at least for me personally, I didn't understand how it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, growing up in um, normal, lower middle class household, you know, we more blue collar, um, traded an hour for a dollar, yep. you know, and then the goal is at some point you save up enough or you have the pension or 401k or whatever, and then you can stop working at some point in time, which is what, 40, 50 years down the road. And so, you know, that was something that was just, I was not interested in doing. And in my, along the path for me, as I started studying how to get out of debt and, and I looked a little bit at personal finance, eventually I came across this book that you mentioned called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, the, the subtitle to the book to me is the most provocative part. It's what the rich teach their kids about money that the poor and middle class do not. Okay. And so for me, that was something that I was like, wait a second here, you know, like mm-hmm. I sort of took it as a little bit of a slight, right? Like it's just, it's money, right? Like right. rich people have money. Right. So what do they need? You know, when what you, do they need to know about if it? If I had a million dollars, I'd be fine, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. But the, most people don't realize 80% of millionaires are self-made. Mm. They started with nothing. Yeah. So they had to build that from scratch. And so what the book is about is how to look at money, the mindset of it, and how to make it work for you versus you working for it. Um, we talked about trading the hour for the dollar. It's about changing that so that you're building something that is providing you dollars whether you work or not. And so that's how you build true wealth. And so this book really opened my eyes in many ways um, to that to that concept. So I know for me, when I read this, I read it back in um, 2001, 2002, and um, it sort of sent me on a path where my entire life changed. Uh, yeah, it, in, in a nutshell. Well, okay. So so tell me when you're you're reading this book, and you know you're the kind of guy who reads a lot of books. Mm-hmm. Um, probably some, probably many that have not stuck with you to the same degree as this one has. So what was it? Do you remember what concept it was that you got to where you thought, whoa, I never thought of it that way before? Right. So the big selling point here is if you can build up enough passive income, which is we'll talk more about in-depth passive income in the next episode. But if you can build up enough passive income, again, that's income you're not working for. It's passively Mm -hmm. coming to you that can exceed your ongoing expenses that you need to live you don't need to work. Mm -hmm. So whether that's passive income, is whether your expenses are a lot or a little, it doesn't matter. So if on a monthly basis, more money is coming in passively than you need to live, you're done. Yeah. Checked out, right? That's, you're sitting on the (laughs) beach, you don't have to work, you can do whatever you want. Right. To me, that was the big eye-opening thing. The idea that if I look at money a different way, if I invest what little money I had, or if I use my creative juices to be able to create more, create more value, like we talked mm-hmm. about in the last episode, your income is a, is a direct reflection of the value you provide the world. If you can change those things such that you're building this passive income to exceed your monthly expenses, you don't have to work. And that can happen at any age. You don't have to wait 40, 50 years. Right. It could happen. I, I know people have done it in three. Mm-hmm. So... Um, that to me was the big, the big takeaway that made me go, huh, yeah. this is a different way of living. And I've 
since then, I, you know, I'd come across examples of people that had actually done it. So it kind of gave me some hope that people that had similar backgrounds to mine could actually accomplish this too. So two things that popped into my head when you were talking about that one, um, and I'm not even sure if this, it does align with what, with this topic, but I'm actually going to save that one for next because it's a sure. little bit, a little bit off on a tangent. Um, actually, no, I'm not. It's not that big of a tangent. How do you keep, so let's say you get your passive income to a point where it's outpacing what mm-hmm. you need to live. Yes. How, and I don't know if this is something that you're currently dealing with um, yourself or as something that you've got in mind, but how do you or how do people keep lifestyle creep from then right. be, you know what I mean? Just yeah. totally boning that whole thing. Right, <laughs> so, right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, the whole, what's so great about this, and this is part of what for me is exciting about the show that we're doing here yeah. and also about the thing. I'm, I'm a seeker of wisdom. Like I love to learn in order to do this well, what are the principles I need to learn to do it, right? But there's a there's a process that happens to you as a person. When you achieve your goals, like what you get from achieving those goals is really nothing compared to like what you become by achieving those goals. So the, the idea of, of transformation as a person, that's the part that is really cool. And that's the part where if we can learn to limit some of the, uh, the baser levels mm-hmm. of our existence things that we might be prone to do like if i make a million dollars a month am i prone to spend a million dollars a month i'm no different than the guy that makes 50 bucks a month and spends it all right right yeah because if i've got nothing left at the end of the day it's only going to take one loss of a job yes and i'm on the street just like so the the one of the other myths that this book kind of explodes is that you need to have a high income to grow wealth Mm -hmm. now it helps if you can keep lifestyle creep under control um, so part of it, you know, part of it is, I know for me, like I've been fortunate and I've, that somehow I've been able to kind of keep my lifestyle at a consistent level the last, you know, five to 10 years, um, which has helped because as the passive income has grown, I haven't spent it all. Right. Yeah. Um, but again, one of the things we talked about at the end of the last episode is when your why is big enough, the how becomes easy. Yeah. The why for me is big enough. Like yeah. I am trying to push past this finish line of having, that passive income exceed monthly expenses, which is effectively called getting out of the rat race. Right. So I don't like the rat race. Yeah. I don't know. I think most people listening to this episode and listening to this show in general don't like the rat race. Mm-hmm. We're willing to really pour ourselves into something and really spend our time growing things that matter, but we don't want to just be part of the the same old right. you know, rabbit wheel. So I so basically what, what you're saying and what it sounds like is that the whether it's the who you're becoming through this, um, the discipline you're you're gaining, yep. and your end goal, maybe all three of those things of, yeah. of getting out of the rat race, essentially become the merchandise. They yeah. become sort of the lifestyle. Yes. Instead yes. of the you know the yeah. stuff. In, 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 <laughs> indeed. Yeah. And the other thing that happens is when you grow as a person and and you start to see the world this way and you're able to accomplish things through you know this path and growing your skills and whatever it is you do. Yeah. Um, it, it becomes this thing that nobody can take away from you, mm. right? If it all goes away, if there's some major downturn in the economy or, you know, I don't know, business partner steals everything or it's something major happens, you lose it all. You have all those same skills. You have that wisdom and you can start over Yeah, because the concepts still apply. Well, I know, I think you were going to get into this anyway, but this is a good, this is a good place, a segue for me to set this up for you. Sure. And how has this concept, because I think a lot of people who are entrepreneurially minded just kind of end up chasing an opportunity that gets in their way, or they think of themselves maybe as an artist or creative type, and then they kind of go down that path. And that's kind of been the way I've, um, that was kind of how I started. But I have to imagine if you come into it knowing that this is your end goal, you may be, you may choose differently Mm-hmm. the ventures into which you <laughs> you get involved. So how did that, how did the fact that you read this and got really immersed in this concept early on change the kinds of businesses you started or the kinds of partnerships you would get involved in? Sure, sure. Well, and, and I think one thing that's important about talking about plans and talking about the path and everything yeah. is, is the plan is one thing, right. right? It's the thing you define and say, this is what's going to happen. And more often than not in a very short period of time, that plan becomes Something obsolete. Yes. <laughs> Something happens, right? Yeah. Um, the, yeah, the, the proverbial and then stuff happened. Um, that was, that was the case for me. Like I, I had no business background, so I really didn't have 
you know, I didn't have a career that I had kind of gone down the path of that I knew, hey, I could spin this off as a business. Or I didn't have, you know, my parents weren't entrepreneurs, so I didn't have that kind of, that that wasn't part of my DNA, so to speak, or at least the, the upbringing. Um, so what I did is I kind of started what other people around me were starting. Um, you know, I know there's, there's a lot of talk about real estate investing. Um, I know that's something we're going to talk about with Clayton on Thursday. Um, cause he's actually, even though he's a, um, uh, an anchor on Fox and friends, he actually is a real estate investor too. Mm-hmm. Not many people know that. Um, but real estate is actually one path where if you understand the concepts of how it works, it can be fairly easy. Um, it takes a lot of work, but it can yeah. be easy to kind of build passive income through that route. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one thing that I, that I sort of got into and just to get into the brass tacks of it. So, um, you know, I ended up being part of this group in, in Chicago that was, we called it the Windy City Roundtable, and there were, you know, 125, 150 people that would get together every month and kind of help each other grow um, along the path of entrepreneurship, real estate investing, some of the concepts from this book that we're talking about today, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And um, there were many people in that group that were real estate investors already. And so there were other people that had thought about it you know, there was one guy that I knew he was a, just a f- brain of a guy. He's, he's the guy that you stick in the back room that would create just amazing kinds of, um, I don't know what the right word is for it, but he could, he constructed some things that allowed us to do, uh, some other things in real estate. And we okay. put together a company together and, and did some small dabbling there and it didn't really work out. But again, I was not the person to lead a company at that time. Yeah. None of us really knew what we wanted to do, but we were playing at it. We were mm-hmm. going through the motions. Um, but eventually I got to the point where I would, uh, so we'll, we'll get into the, the little bit of the breast tax of real estate here. I would go and I would find a small single family house in which I could identify through research that I had done that there was equity in this property. And I felt like I could get it at a certain price in which that equity could be realized. Now I didn't have any money. Yeah. So I would go in and I would negotiate the contract, so Mm -hmm. to speak, right? The purchase contract. And I would lock that in. Um, one of the clauses that I would include in the contract is that the contract would be assignable. Like I could assign it to anybody else. And then I would go and I would effectively shop that contract because now I'd created an asset that had value. And then I would sell that to somebody, the rights to, to close that deal to, to another investor that actually had money. And they would give me a fee for that. Mm, okay. It's called assigning the contract and I got a fee for that. And so I did this a number of times and eventually I'd built up enough that I could then start investing in things myself. Um, so, you know, a lot of people think that you have, it takes money to make money. That's a good example of by being creative, by finding a solution to, for buyers and sellers that you actually create money out of thin air in a, in a way. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's another, another real cool concept. But so that led to just kind of growing things along that, those lines. You know, I was a big reader, so I'd kind of filled my head with knowledge and how to succeed in business. So I was also consulting for other people. This is another kind of story along those lines. I was at this group. I was basically just reading a ton of things because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I eventually became known as the kid. I was 22 at the time. I became known as the kid that had all the answers, so to speak, yeah. right? I'd read a ton of stuff recently. So people would, would come to me with questions and, and whatnot, or when we somebody would raise their hand in the group and say, I have this problem. Uh, more often than not, I would at least know of a route that they could go. Um, and so people started coming to me, asking me questions about how to do this or that or whatever. And I would offer them solutions. And then eventually in a few months, I'd hear that they actually worked. Mm. And finally, one person asked me, they, he said, well, what do you charge for this? And I said uh, to myself, of course, uh, <laughs> I can charge for this. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just sharing what I read, right? Which I went to the public library, paid yeah. no money, and I read these things, and now I have this knowledge, and I passed it along, and now someone's asking me what that's, what that's worth. What do right. I charge for this? What do you charge an hour? Is what the guy asked me. So I did some research, and as it turned out, at the time, being a business consultant, um, basically the starting hourly rate that you could charge as a consultant was somewhere in the fifty to seventy-five dollar an hour range. Now I'm a kid that had no money, right. No job, no college. Yeah. And immediately I had this avenue where I could make 50 to $75 an hour. Well, I was taking odd jobs at the time at six fifty seven dollars yeah. an hour. So for me, it's okay. I can get almost 10 times the value of right. the same hour. Then I could use that to invest in other things and, and sort of start growing from there. So eventually that kind of snowballed and I would start other projects. But, but that idea, the concept, the, the mental model of I can create value out of nothing that right. somebody will pay for. And then I can use that to keep trading up. 
and to, and the, and the knowledge doesn't go away. I mean, you you paid in your time to read it yeah. and absorb it, but yeah, then exactly. it's there. It's there, and you can use it, and you can tap it in multiple absolutely ways and forever. Yep, and I still use everything I read right. today. Mm-hmm. Everything that I read in those early days, I still use today. And whether it's a huge deal or it's some, yeah. you know just working with an employee or a partner or whatever. Yeah, that's a really cool way of looking at it. And I know um, in tomorrow's episode one point three, we're going to get more into this idea of not just trading time for money um or you're out you know it, it's that's definitely a path that can get you a, a certain you know a certain distance yeah. and then i think at some point most of us start thinking is this all there is like if, or how right. do we sure. how do we grow or start earning money that we don't have to be physically on hand right. to um yeah to make happen so and um, we'll be digging more into that tomorrow but i definitely want to you know make sure that we cover everything about this book that you love so Passive income was one of the biggest ones. Is that really what the rich teach their kids about money that the middle class and, and poor don't? Or I think the idea behind, so when you think about, th- there's two real financial forms, so to speak. And I mean like paper or electronic forms right. that are really important when it comes to analyzing a person's finances or business's finances. One is the income statement or profit and loss mm. statement. So that's your income minus your expenses is what's left. What's left is cash flow. That's right. so we utilize that term. That's the con- that's the term that comes up in this book a lot. That's the term that I use. Um, and it, it, if you're looking at a, a true profit and loss statement, the bottom line is not necessarily the cash flow because there's things that don't go on that that cash goes out the door for. But y- you can use that in a combination with another statement to really understand the cash comes in, you spend mm-hmm. cash, cash is left. So cash flow is what's left. The other statement is the balance sheet, which is your assets and your liabilities. The basic definition of an asset is something that puts money into your pocket or is money. Mm. A liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. So it's a, it's a, it's a loan. You've borrowed $100,000 to buy a house. That, that loan is a liability. You're going to owe that $100,000 and you're going to have to make a payment on that, which is an expense. So going back to that income statement, your income minus your expenses is your cash flow. Well, if you keep buying liabilities, right? Toys, right. boats. Uh, you rack up credit card debt, you buy a house, you buy a bigger house, you keep trading up, you know, eventually you never get out of that, that treadmill of bigger payments, more money. I've got to keep my income going. I've got to keep working. I have to get, you know, if I want to trade up to a bigger lifestyle, quote unquote, I've got to get a better job. And so that's the, that's the rat race. That's the treadmill that most people are on. And, and that's part of, you know, we think about the American dream. That's kind of part of that is having all of the basic things, which is all fine and good. However, you can't, you can't develop a lifestyle where you're free from that job. Or if you lose that job, you're screwed. You can't you can't develop an independence from that, a financial independence from your job, from your employer, from the liabilities that you've built up for yourself, the toys that you have. There there are anchors holding you down. Well, what the rich teach their kids about money is that if you if you focus your time on developing an asset, which is again something that puts money into your pocket, such as the 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 idea that I could then trade my knowledge for a higher dollar rate right. and I could use invest in that or um, assigning those contracts. So we're investing in eventually what I could do, and I didn't actually do this very much, but I could have done it is, is by rental properties, which mm-hmm. is something Clayton's going to talk about Thursday, which then there's a difference between the income that comes in, the expense right. you have, that's passive income that comes to you, right? Mm. So you invest in assets that over time build passive income coming to you. That's the, that's the premise. Not to say you can't have houses and boats and right. like all the fun stuff, but you're first focusing on making sure that your financial picture is one where you're not working for money. Money is working for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And in many ways, a lot of that has to do with mindset. You know, building wealth is really a mindset activity. It's your mind is where the wealth is created. And then after the fact that that materializes in the real world. I think that there's a a real misconception sometimes of the idea of passive income, that it has to be in some way related to your business or your brand. And it, you know, what we're talking about are things that, Aren't necessarily. I mean, no. real estate investment has nothing to do really with, or at least that house that you yeah. bought or whatever it was, right. has nothing to do with your, your job. Right. Um, in some ways, it could subsidize your work and that it would allow you to take on maybe some risks you wouldn't yep. otherwise be able to mm-hmm. or work a little harder on something that's a passion project. Um, sure. So it's kind of a nice way of looking at it. Like I do this to get that, you know, yeah. to, to free myself up. 
to Absolutely. do that. Yeah. Well, we are all investors. Right. It, whether you have no money and you're just investing your time or the talents that you have or you have money that you're investing, you're trading those things for hopefully an increased value in your lifestyle, right? Um, and so what we do with the money we have left at the end of the month, right? The difference between our income and our expenses, what we do with that and also what we do with our time, what we have in those gaps between mm-hmm. if, if we have a nine to five job now, what we're doing in our spare time to build something for ourselves, what we do, that's the cash flow or the time flow that we right. spend, we invest into something that can create uh, a, a, a betterment of our lives. Yeah, love it. Anything else to say about this book? No, I think we're we're really going to dive into some passive yeah. income stuff next, which right. I, I want to save for uh, the next episode. But absolutely, um, I, su- suffice it to say. Now, I don't know Robert Kiyosaki personally, um, uh, and you know, I, some people have criticized whether or not the rich dad and the poor dad in the book are real. Yeah. Um, it to me, it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, because the concepts yeah, of what this yeah, they're a metaphor, right? Yeah. It, maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but. <laughs> The nobody can take away the concepts that I've learned from this book. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the the idea that you have to have a high income to be to be rich, or um, you know so much so much of what we focus on um, in terms of financial literacy in school or just in life. Most yeah. of this stuff is not even taught, and it's basic stuff. This book is written at a fifth grade level. Yeah, this is basic stuff that to me every American, every person across the globe who lives in a capitalist or free market society should understand. And that to me is the true travesty that this is not taught right. because it's simply in my life and in many other people's lives, it's just the understanding of how this stuff works that has changed the whole path. And, and, and it truly is that uh, something that, you know, is a, 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 a field leveler. I mean, it, it's yeah. something that really, yes. if you've never had the opportunity to be exposed to it, you really probably won't unless something like this gets in your path because your parents won't know right. to teach you. So there's been this big divide. And now I feel like with, and this is something we, we talk about a lot is technology and, and the internet and sort of how connected everything is, is opening everyone up to these ideas. Yep. And so who knows in 20, 30 years, like what are, you know, what my kids are going to know that right. I didn't have the opportunity to know. It's pretty exciting. Actually. It's, it's, it's amazingly exciting. Yeah. This is a great time to be alive. It is. It is. Well, this is a good place to end this episode. Again, this is episode 1.2. Um, um, if you didn't listen to yesterday's um, very, very first 1.1 episode, we kind of explained that we're building a weekly theme um, by segmenting kind of a larger episode into daily mini episodes. And so today is Tuesday and at least it's Tuesday when we release this. So we might cover a tip or a technique or a tool or a trick, something like that. Um, And then tomorrow we're going to be talking about passive income and this idea of not trading your time for limited amounts of money. Mm -hmm. We all want to move past that. So thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Life Work Podcast. Build your business and design your life with us every day, Monday through Friday. And find us at lifeworkpodcast.com.